Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint a cute teacup covered in strawberries with a dragonfly perched on the rim. My name's Diane and I welcome you to my studio every day where together we paint lovely paintings in watercolour. So remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you never miss a thing. So I've been playing around with a couple of ideas this morning and I've had it in my head for at least a week that we ought to paint some strawberries since strawberry season is upon us. And so we went out and uh, gathered um, an innocent plant that uh, has done no one any harm. And I'm told by um, the person who gathered it, that's to say my daughter, that it can be replanted and it will come back with gay abandon and produce more strawberries. So. Anyway, to look at the strawberry, we see uh, the shape of the leaves and the fact that there are fruit forming and there are flowers dying down. There are flowers in full flower, so to speak, and uh, the shape of the stems and all of those things really important when it comes to understanding a strawberry plant. Um, and then, of course, there's the strawberries themselves which have these little crowns around the top of them that are characteristic and the, the curving stems. So all of those things go together to make the strawberry motif that we're going to use. Um, I'm going to paint a cup with strawberry design on it and a famous dragonfly sitting on the edge of the cup. And I was playing with a few ideas this morning, including the idea of a stack of cups this is something you have probably seen on Pinterest, which is where I saw it, but I thought that might be a bit complicated. So today we'll start with something like this. This is my practice sketch, and I'm going to show you how to do a dragonfly uh, wing in one stroke and um, how to make this little design on the cup. So I'll put my sketch on the side and I'm working today on hot pressed board. Um, you don't need hot press board to paint on, but um, this is quite thick, quite hard. You can hear that wobble the board, and you don't need to stretch this or anything because it's actually uh, not going to buckle because it's so thick. Okay, now to start off um, with the cup, uh, I'm going to do the um, the oval, which uh, is the the top edge. Top edge, what do you call it? The top of the cup, the, there's an ellipse, something like that. And then um, a nice curve, trying to make it as near as possible the same on both sides. That is so tremendously difficult. Don't worry if you can't get them exactly even. The two sides it doesn't matter in this day and age uh, nothing matters anymore not the truth not reality nothing really matters so then the handle sort of grows out from the side and we're we're going to um, do a nice it's like an ear isn't it a curvy sort of handle there coming down and sitting at the bottom of the cup. It's perhaps not the most realistic of cups, but uh, in fact, actually, I am going to make that a little different. I'm going to take it up a bit further. Don't be ashamed to modify your design and I'll try not to make it look like a beer glass. So let's reposition the ellipse and I'll reposition the handle and then I'm going to just erase the bits I don't need. I promise you this will look more like a cup when it's done. And then we're going to put the, the dragonfly uh, or damselfly or whatever um, you would like to think that is. 
It's going to be sitting on the edge there. And uh, here's a damselfly. The tail tends to go back up, curves up a little bit. So, and then the wing. And we've done lots of practice of the dragonfly wings recently. So I suggest you paint the wing the way you are happy with. And I'm going to show you a slightly different method today that you might want to try. So this board that I'm using is quite a nice white colour. And to get the effect I'm after, that's what I was looking for, was some really white paper like my sketch paper. And this was the best I could come up with. So hot press, bright white, like illustration board, for those of you who know anything about illustrations. That's what that is. So um, I'm doing doing the ink pen and ink um, drawing on the, the cup now. I'm not going to worry about perspective or anything like that because we don't need to worry about but anyone can have their own perspective. So, you know, that's how this all started, really. When uh, modern art started, people started to see the world differently and they didn't all see it the same way. I think I might have read that somewhere. So, yeah. Anyway, so these are the stems of the strawberries and uh, they're going to connect to the strawberry and we've got these little um, sepals and then the strawberry shape, which is a sort of triangle with rounded sides, isn't it? Rounded corners rather, if you want to sort of break it down into its shapes. And then the little sepals are like little leaves and there's gonna be a few dots on there, the seeds on the strawberry plants. And this is a flower, they have five petals and um, a little uh, yellow area in the middle with the sequels behind, which you may or may not be able to see. And uh, also another strawberry there and another one there. I think for me anyway, it's better to put the fruit in first. So I know I've got a, a sort of scattering of, of fruit because they're going to be red and so of course they'll affect the design and we'll put another one down here and obviously I'm going to fill this in with leaves and things like that Um, so I'll come back to that in a second. Um, I'm now going to just draw the outline of the cup. Just going to ink that and then when, when it's been painted, you might want to come back with a bit more pen and ink. I'm using very fine nib here, this is a point one, because it's very smooth board and I don't want it to look too heavy. So this is just to give you a bit more structure to work with and, um, and I'm thinking to myself it's time I <clears throat> bought myself some new fine liners. Links in the description below for all the things that I use and I can go and use one of those myself can't I save myself some time. Okay so then we have the, the dragonfly here just ink in his body a little bit and his legs two at the front and two at the back and his body and then just a rough indication of the, where the pet, um, wings are going to go and his body with his segments Curving up a little bit the tail. You could put a bird on there if you felt like being a bit more ambitious. That's what I had in mind in the beginning. I was going to put a bird on the edge of the cup, which also looks quite cute. But then I thought that might be a little bit, uh, take a little bit too long. It would make the video too long. So I decided to do it like this. So I'm going to finish the drawing and then come back to show you how to do the painting. 
Okay, I've finished inking in the design now, and if you want to download this from our website, you can do that free of charge just by going to dianeanton.com and you'll find everything there that you need to, to get a download of this so you don't have to draw it. So the colors I'm going to use for this painting are uh, for the green, I've chosen sap green, and I'm going to blend that together with some uh, lemon yellow and a little bit of cobalt blue to give me an interesting uh, shade of green for the leaves on the cup. And then I've got quinacridone gold to add a little bit to the um, yellow. And then the strawberries are going to be a mixture of bright red, old Holland bright red, which is um, also very, very similar to um, cadmium red and then um, alizarin crimson as well. So those for the strawberries, that's for the leaves and uh, this for the shadow and so on and so forth. So uh, let's get started with the painting. I'm using a number five or number seven rather um, round watercolor brush with a nice point. And um, so that should give me enough control over the detail on the flowers. And uh, so we'll just start, I think, with the strawberries. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the, the bright red and I'm just going to drop that in really loosely and then add to that a little bit of alizarin crimson. And I'm keeping well away from the edges of my drawing because I don't want this to be completely accurate. If anything, I'm going to go over, <clears throat> over the edges and sort of keeping one side of the strawberry, the orangey red color and the other side more of the alizarin crimson color. And then some of them I'm going to make more or less all alizarin, just making a variety of different mixtures of these two reds. So we have a, an interesting design and uh, making them fairly wet. There's one hiding there behind the leaf. Have I missed any? I'm not sure, I don't think so. Oh yes, I have, and down here. There we are. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little uh, ladybird up here, or a ladybug on the corner of the cup. There's another strawberry. That's the rim. Couldn't remember that word earlier. Okay, so I think I need another strawberry here to balance the colour arrangements. I'm just popping another one in and I'll ink that later. Okie dokie, so that's the, that's the red. And now for the leaves, I'm going to come in with the, first of all, the yellow. I'm going to drop the yellow into two or three of the leaves. And then I'll come in with the green. And I'm just literally one stroke and then the blue, and I'm going to let that blend. So while I've got this uh, mixture of colors on my paintbrush, I'm going to draw in the stems, or some of the stems, which are green, and some of the sepals. And we've got some of these leaves in, these tiny ones down here, they're not going to possible to do with the mixing method. So again, yellow. Could use uh, quinacridone gold as well, a little bit of that. Pop that in. Make sure it's nice and damp, not too wet, but on the damp side. Then a stroke of green. You don't have to do this do it this way, but this is one way to do it, which I haven't, I don't think, shown before. Nothing to stop you painting it in really carefully if you want to. But I quite like the loose effect, and when it's dry, it'll be more uh, organised because it will bleed into to itself. And some of them will paint more simply, so just like that. And then pick up some bright green for these 
tying down sepals here and that leaf up there. Can anyone see any more leaves needing painting? I can see plenty of stems needing painting. So we're going to come in here. Good idea to do some of them with a bit more of a blue tint. So I've um, added some cobalt blue to my green now to give a blue, bluish tint. I'll put that down there as well. And uh, here and here. And then I need to paint the centres of the flowers, which I'm going to do in Crinacridone Gold. In, a, in reality, they're a bit more lemony, but that won't show up very much. And since the flowers are white, uh, that won't really have much impact. So I'm going to do it like that. And then, you know, to paint white, you have to paint the shadows on the white. So you can't really paint white itself. It doesn't work. So I've picked up some light cobalt blue. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around near to the petals and slightly over them, just giving a kind of background shadow to indicate where the flowers, where the white flowers are. And then that same, <clears throat> the same blue I'm going to put on the inside of the rim of the cup, just round like that. Maybe up a little bit here. And then we want to put some on the handle, a little bit down here. And then we want to probably think about um, uh, the table that it's standing on. I'm just going to drop in some, very roughly drop in some blue the support. That's where you, you could go crazy there and, and draw a lace tablecloth or something if you wanted to, but that will do for the purposes of this. <clears throat> now the dragonfly or um, damselfly, I'm going to do the body in bright blue and I'm just going to drop some bright blue along the body tail rather. This is body, that's the tail. Let's get it right down. And then I'm going to try to do one stroke um, wings here, which means picking up uh, two colours on the brush, some blue and some green, and really hoping and praying it's going to work. It probably won't, but I'm not going to hang about worrying, so I'm just going to go like that. And then like that. So there we are. And um, a little bit more green in here. And I think we're close to being done. We'll put a bit more blue down here. So there we are. When that's dry, I might very well come back in and do a few more additional strokes and things. But on the whole, I think that's worked out quite well. So I'll call that done. This is the original sketch. And you can see how I did the dragonfly there. It's This has probably worked better than the one I just did, although that's okay. Um, something else that you can do if you want to on when you're using hot paper, hot press paper, if you do the wing and it doesn't work out with the one stroke thing, you can drop drops of water in and that will give you this kind of mottled effect, which is really quite interesting. So you can always try that as a way of rescuing the thing if it doesn't quite work out. When this is dry, I'll come in with the, the um, fine liner again and put in a few veins probably if I feel it needs it, but it might be just perfectly fine the way it is. So there we are, I'm gonna call that done. I shall be going off and eating my strawberries now. It's lunchtime. So bon appetit everybody, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye everyone, bye-bye. <laughs>